Expedition 5. The Sacred Enemy. Journal Entry. Yesterday, I followed the tracks of a large rhino bull as he marked his territory. Periodically, I would find the telltale signs of where he had dragged his back feet through a bush that he had sprayed on. The tracks were very fresh. They had been made some time in the darkness, just before sunrise. I'll talk more about that. Initially, I closed the distance between the rhino and I fast. It was a beautiful winter's morning, and he was moving in predictable ways through easy terrain. He cut up the steep bank of a waterhole and then down into the hollow pan on the far side. In the center of the waterhole was soft mud, but the edges had dried into a hard crust where it was difficult to see tracks. Here, I couldn't shake the distinct feeling that the rhino was trying to throw me off his trail. He moved erratically over hard ground. To complicate matters, a herd of elephant had come down to the pan, sweeping over his tracks in places with their large wrinkled feet. To add to the confusion, there were also tracks of a female rhino from the evening before, which resulted in me setting off twice on the wrong track of the right animal. Such was the difficulty that it took me about half an hour of moving meticulously around the waterhole, staring at the ground like a code breaker to decipher the irregular pattern of how the rhino had moved. In situations like this, when the tracking is tricky, a kind of adversarial mentality can develop. The feeling that the animal and the track is against you in some way, intentionally trying to beat you, leaving you broken and confused. Difficult tracking would be akin to reading something over and over that you simply cannot understand. It feels like that in your brain. Eventually, I found his route away from the waterhole, and with it came a surge of glee. Suddenly, I was tracking well again, moving through a beautiful sand felt thicket white sand, the tracks of the rhino almost shining in the morning sun. I thought of how sometimes in life we just have to persist through a time of confusion, and then one day, quite suddenly, we find ourselves out the other end, with everything moving easily again, flowing. The rhino tried to throw me a second time, but with boosted confidence now, I stayed on his circular trail. I was totally alone, moving on his tracks in spiraling circles, as if I was doing some kind of interpretive dance in the woods with absolutely no audience, all the time sensing the pattern of the animal's movement. If the rhino was my nemesis, then he was my sacred enemy. His attempts to throw me off his trail, the difficulty that he was providing, was causing untold growth in my tracking game. As I reflected on it, I realized that the deepest awakenings in my life have come from some of the darkest adversaries. Sometimes it is in contrast to what we are not that we can finally see what we are. Rivalry, when understood correctly, is an opportunity to have an encounter through someone or something else with yourself or, capital S, self. In my own life, I could look back through time to moments when I had count encountered real darkness that had in, in the end been doorways into light. Yeah, there was the usual stuff, the boarding school beatings from school bullies that taught me to be a protector of the underdog. There was the time I was held at gunpoint and told I was going to be killed and how in that moment everything stopped for a moment and became insanely still and quiet. And how all the fear left me and I looked down the barrel of the gun into the eyes of my attacker. In that moment, my assailant was one of the great spiritual teachers of my life. But all of these paled in comparison 
after the litigation we went through. When I was 19 years old, my family was sued. And what followed was a 10-year battle that was both emotionally and financially apocalyptic. Looking back on it now, the suit was essentially a raid by a party so dark that they knew they could sue us until we ran out of money and then claim our assets. It was an outright hostile overrun. The goal was to annihilate us. We as a family had never been in a legal battle. Naively, we were under the impression that the law is about the law. We quickly learnt that the world of litigation is more of a dogfight than a question of truth. It's all about tactics, underhandedness. Over ten years, we were continuously driven to the brink of destruction, to utter financial ruin, through a process that seemed to have no end. It was an incredibly dark time. On one occasion, we sat down with the opposition to try and work things out. I remember how through dead reptilian eyes, he told us that to him, the litigation was simply a game of percentages, and his goal was to utterly destroy us. It was the first time I had looked into the eyes of someone truly evil. Anyone who, who has been in a court case understands the kind of pressure it creates. The toll is brutal on health, on your psyche, on everything. No one sleeps. I was anxious and depressed at the same time, and it was relentless. It just went on and on, always waiting for the hammer to drop. For us, the stakes would have been losing everything. We would have gone to the street in some ways. I wonder if you've ever been to a place like that in your life and felt that kind of fear. Total wipeout. Down we went, like Dante, to the center of hell. We lived on the lip of losing everything for seven years. And then something happened. Down there in the midst of hell, we started to rise. From a place deep inside of us as a family, we started to change. That old saying that it's darkest before the dawn. You see, on the brink of losing everything, there comes a choice. And that choice is to totally surrender to faith or to live in fear. And we broke into a faith that whatever happened was meant to happen. We accepted the worst that could happen and decided that if we were to go there, we would at least go with grace. None of this happened consciously. It was more subtle than that. Without us knowing it, those dark days were the beginning of an inner awakening. Amidst all the accusations and counter-accusations of lawyers, we had to learn to ask ourselves what our own truth was. What was that inner sense of integrity that we held on to? And how did we make that integrity what was most important to us? I tell you, down there in the blackness, a door opened to a place of beauty. And there, standing at the threshold to that door, was our sacred enemy, the very people who were suing us, inviting us through suffering and darkness to the light. All life evolves in contrast. Like a vine feeling for a scaffolding to brace itself against, suffering can be the foundation of awakening. Facing the sacred enemy until you can love them, forgiving you your true self, brings with it a compassion and gratitude that can cure all bitterness and restore faith. That which tests us evolves us. If we like a tracker, are disciplined to see the tracks of what they have given us. You must attune through the pain and darkness and focused on the smallest details of how their darkness has shown you your light. Ask yourself of your sacred enemy, what truth have they shown me? Sacred enemy, how did you grow me? Sacred enemy, why am I grateful to you? 
sacred enemy, who would I be if not for you? All around us right now the world is breaking into factions. The evolution on this adversity is to discover all enemies are the teachers of a compassion born of the understanding that on the journey of awakening every person, especially those you are most opposed to or who are most opposed to you, are the face of a teacher. Your journey cannot be complete till you can look at everyone and see a friend to your awakening. This leaves all responsibility with you. This is the path of meditating on your sacred enemy. This is the path of taking responsibility for your own life. This is the power to choose. And this is the work of the Awakeners. And that is what you are. 4-0, out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty. Visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.